Hello everyone, today is April 22nd, 2014. I'm getting a lot of questions about bow ties. So today I thought I would spend a few minutes with you talking about the pattern. It's a transitional pattern that's designed to get into a new trim fairly early. And it's very relevant right now because the overall market, at least basis of the piece, has been doing okay. But the NASDAQ has been questionable as of late, as has the Rusty, and that's the Russell 2000. And then quite a few sectors have rolled over and have formed the pattern. So I think now is an important time to pay attention to this particular pattern. Before we get to talking about that couple things first of all there's a disclaimer screen if you want to read the long version hit pause or go to my website davelander.com or I could just sum it up for you really quick all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then here's my bio I'm not gonna bore you and read all this you can go to my website if you want to read this I've been at this for a very very long time I've written uh, three books on the subject and seven languages total and I'm author of the layman's guide to trading stocks which is my latest book see my website for more on that now a couple things about me I'm not gonna bore you and go through all this because I've covered this quite often but first of all just real quick I like to keep it simple and there's a repeatability to what I do if you study my patterns and study the markets and I'm not saying it's easy it does take a little bit of work but there is a repeatability if you're following me directly you should you should be able to repeat uh, what I do also it's not my way or the highway if you have your own way of doing things and you can find something that I do that makes sense and sort of use a little bit of what I'm doing a la carte and add to what you're doing and if it adds to your success then hey I'm very excited about that now transitional patterns are early trend patterns and there's quite a few of them that I follow uh, two of the biggest ones and the most important ones I think are the first thrust and the bow tie and today we'll talk about the bow tie and I will touch upon the first thrust because I think that one is very important to. And you can read about these in my book, 10 Best Patterns and Strategies, uh, 10 Best Swing Trading Patterns and Strategies, which is on my website. These patterns could also work longer term. Now, let's talk about uh, what a transition is. If a market is in a longer term uptrend, and it looks something like this, and it begins to roll over, you don't want to necessarily try to short it up here just because it looks like it's losing a little steam but once it begins to roll over and it's pretty obvious that the rollover has begun and you use one of those aforementioned transitional patterns to alert you to the fact then you look to get in on that first little pullback and this is a much safer place to short a market than here now on this graphic you're thinking well wait a minute why not get in here well the reason you don't get in there is because many times you have a longer term trend it'll correct a little bit and then that longer term trend will resume in fact the core methodology that I trade my hybrid approach which hybrid meaning short to intermediate term trading uh, is based on capturing a swing trade profit and also capturing a longer term profit and to do that we're looking to trade pullbacks on the downside or I should say on the upside if you're looking to buy a market you don't want to buy a market just because it's low because what is low low is relative and if it's a downtrend as chances are there's something wrong and that market might continue to trend lower but if you let it bottom out and begin to rally you wait for some sort of pattern to set up and you look to enter on that first correction that's a much safer place to get into a market now when I say markets I mean it could be a stock it could be Forex it could be an index or whatever market you trade futures I believe that markets are markets I prefer to trade stocks and I think that stocks have the potential to be, be a lot more inefficient than the overall market or futures of Forex. But these markets, these other markets, these more efficient markets can be traded. In fact, if you are going to trade them, I would recommend you trade a pattern such as the bow tie or some other transitional pattern, but only off of major, major lows and major, major highs. And I'll flesh that out in just one second. Now, a couple of things before we talk about trading the bow tie, keep in mind that it's very important that you learn how to recognize trends transitions and the reason is trends don't seem to last as long as they used to and a lot of people email me hey Dave has something changed fundamentally or whatever in the markets and my answer is well you never know for sure maybe 10 years from now we'll know in hindsight but I do know that sometimes after you have a big bull market like we saw back in the late 90s then you didn't you, you didn't have a choppy period in between and these periods could go for a very 
very long time. And we did have a pretty serious uh, downtrend, obviously, in the early 2000s. And then we also had another one in 2008, followed by a big swing back up. So it just seems like markets have been a little choppier since we had that great bull market of the late 90s and the other bull and bear markets in between. So um, another thing, too, is bottom picking and top picking is really a loser's game. It's a bad idea. As I just said, a lot of times markets just keep on going. Here's the beauty. There's a chance to catch a major trend early. Now, one of the downsides of trading trend transitions is the fact that you could just be fighting what turns out to be a longer-term resumption of trend, and it isn't really a bottom, and it isn't really a top. The good news is all tops, all major tops, and all major bottoms will have one of these transitional patterns within them. Not every transitional pattern will turn into a major top or major bottom, but the fact that they do occur and will occur makes them worth watching for what that tr that top or that bottom does pan out and a new trend begins. Now let's talk about the bow tie. The reason the pattern is called a bow tie is because it actually looks like a bow tie when the moving averages come together and then begin to spread out again. In fact, your best patterns are going to be very tight and have a very tight uh, crossover point, which we'll look at in just one second here. First of all, before we get into talking about moving averages, I really don't use any indicators other than the occasional moving average. I always look at charts first. So price or charts is the ultimate indicator. The beauty of an occasional indicator such as the moving average is it can help to alert you to what's going on in the un in the underlying price but always look at price first and I've been through quite a few indicators and oscillators throughout the years to try to help me determine what price is actually doing and the only thing that I'm left with or left still using is the moving averages and the bow ties can be really good for helping to determine those trends changes so just remember that an indicator is derived from price it's a second derivative or a first derivative I forget how you count them but it's a derivative of price okay so an indicator often just illustrates what's already there so instead of calling them indicators meaning they indicate something's going to happen I like to see them as illustrators that illustrate what has already happened and what is already there and what may happen but not necessarily with certainty Okay. Now let's talk about moving averages used. I get a lot of questions about this, so I'll just go through this real quick. Uh, I like to use a 10-day simple because it's the true average price of the last 10 days. You just add up the last 10 closing prices of a stock or a future or whatever and divide by 10. It's that simple. Now don't worry about the math because charting packages will do this for you. Even the most basic and many free ones will allow you to use moving averages. Uh, 10 days. Why 10 days? Well, 10 days because it gives you about two weeks worth of trading assuming there's usually five trading days Monday through Friday per trading week unless you have a holiday like we had last week because it was Easter but for the most part it gives me an idea what's going on over the last two weeks and I like that simple moving average because it gives me a true representation of price now as we move further out in time when we get to the one month moving average I like the exponential moving average a little better now don't worry about the math on on these it's a slightly more complex than the simple moving average. But again, it's available in almost every charting package in the world out there. Uh, the beauty of the EMA is it front weights the data, meaning that the more recent data is much more important than prior data. So it's going to turn a lot quicker after a price crosses. Okay. And it will capture, it will catch up to price much faster than a simple moving average. So a simple moving average will be a little slow to turn and then an exponential moving average is going to be a little quicker to turn when the turn begins to occur or when the price begins to occur. The other thing that's kind of cool about them is if price, let's say you have a downtrend moving average, if price crosses above the moving average, the moving average is going to be very fast to turn back up. The exponential moving average that is once price crosses over. And that's an anomaly that makes it pretty cool and it makes the bow tie or uh, one of the things I should say that helps to make the bow tie work. I also like a 30-day exponential moving average, 30-day EMA, and that's approximately six weeks worth of trading. 30 divided by five trading days on average gives you about six weeks worth of trading. That's pretty cool. And once again, the EMA is going to front weight that data. It's going to turn a little quicker. And please don't worry about the math. You don't have to know much about electricity to flip a switch on to turn the light on in the room. Okay. Um, one thing real quick, let's talk about proper order 
of markets in uptrend proper order the 10 is going to be greater than the 20 and the 20 is going to be greater than the 30 and in downtrend proper order the 10 is going to be less than the 20 and the 20 is going to be less than the 30. now let's take a look at what that looks like on a chart okay this is actually energy and this is as of uh, midday on uh, 422 2014 and we could see uh, there's the 10-day simple moving average is above the 20-day exponential moving average and the 20-day exponential moving average is above the 30 so the 10 is greater than the 20 and the 20 is greater than the 30 now if all you did when it comes to markets is pay attention to proper uptrend order and proper downtrend order as a general statement you would stay on the right side of the market you certainly wouldn't fight markets when the moving averages have crossed over and are headed lower and you certainly wouldn't be uh, buying those markets when the moving averages are going down so that in and of itself can help keep you on the right side of the market let's take a look at what they look like in downtrend proper order um, as I said earlier a lot of sectors have recently rolled over now we're having a pretty good day in the overall market with the markets you got to take things on a day-by-day -day basis but in recent times many technology related areas and quite a few other areas for that matter have rolled over and the moving averages have uh, trended in downtrend proper order or have rolled over to downtrend proper order I should say in this case the 10 is now less than the 20 and the 20 is now less than the 30 this is biotech you can look at quite a few other sectors out there right now drugs in general internet uh, a lot of other tech areas like software all of these moving averages most of those areas have rolled over and flipped over from uptrend proper order to downtrend proper order so just kind of taking it on the appearance of a bow tie if you had a little guy in here my drawing's not too good but if you had a little guy in here and he was wearing a bow tie this is what it would look like so your 10 flips over it goes above the 20 and then your 20 goes above the 30 and then your 30 ends up below the 20 okay so 10 is less than 20 and 20 is less than 30 and now 10 is greater than 20 and 20 is greater than 30 now let's take a look at that doesn't mean a whole lot unless you look at it on a chart so let's take a look at the rules real quick uh, just a couple simple rules the moving averages should cross from downtrend proper order to uptrend proper order over a short period of time the shorter the time period uh, especially if you get like a three bar cross it's going to look more and more like a bow tie. Uh, the market should pull back for at least one bar. So if you were looking to buy a market and look like this, and your bow ties came together and did the crossing, something like this, okay, and you had that fulcrum point in the middle, you would wait for a one bar pullback. Now, a lot of people might wait for a two bar, three bar pullback. The problem with that is sometimes when you get a market making a turn, the turn happens real fast, and a lot of people get left behind waiting for those second bar or third bar pullback. So you want at least a one bar pullback, and of course you want to wait for an entry when that occurs. So one bar pullback means a lower low and a lower high. So this low is lower than this one, and this high is lower than that one. So that's a one bar pullback. In some cases, lower highs only. Let's say, let's say you get a market that looks like this, where the market rallies up, especially if you get a big wide range bar. Sometimes you might just get a lower high. This high is lower than this and you won't get that lower low where this low is lower than this one uh, those can be traded uh, if provided of course you got to have a, maybe a fast market turn and you have ideally maybe like a wide range bar in this in this uh, particular situation sometimes you just get these little tiny minor corrections and then the market is off to the races and you have to be willing to trade those of course only on an entry now this is what the actual bow tie looks like I forget which market this is this may be uh, bonds if, if memory serves but I think um, it, it doesn't matter markets are, again markets are markets you can see the 10 is less than the 20 and the 20 is less than the 30 if you could see further back on this chart the moving averages would be coming down from higher levels and they would probably look something like this okay even though they are kind of beginning to turn upwards in here but notice that they all come together really quick over a short period of time three or four bars okay if you begin counting as soon as you get your first crossing and then you get the one bar pullback in this particular case it is a lower high and a lower low now this doesn't mean that you you wouldn't want to trade a two bar pullback or even a three or four bar pullback this is just the earliest possible time that you would get in you want to wait for that first 
signal of a correction, okay? A lot of people might think, well, as soon as they cross over, let's just buy a market. And they, that might be that might work, uh, provided you're coming off of all-time lows or all-time highs. Unfortunately, though, you got to be careful with moving average crossovers because as a general statement, a moving average crossover, meaning if you just blindly buy a market when it crosses above or below its moving average, whatever the case may be, it, it will not test out and you will not be profitable doing that. But if you wait for some sort of defined pattern like a bow tie crossing, especially if it looks like a very tight type of bow tie, like a, a physical bow tie, and you wait for that setup to occur, and then you use entries and money management, then your chances of success are going to be a lot better. Now let's take a look at a couple of real examples. Uh, here's an energy company from a long, long time ago, but you can see this is actually in uh, the layman's guide to trading stocks, straight from the book. You can see that this uh, market has been kind of trading sideways in more recent times, and if you had a longer term chart, you would see that these moving averages are coming down from very high levels in here. So it comes down, begins to bottom out. You don't want to buy the market just because it's bottoming out. But after you get this bow tie signal, after you get this crossing in here, and you see the 10 go back above the 20 and the 20 go back above the 30, give you the appearance of a bow tie, then you look for your first little pullback and look to get long above that high. Let's take a look at another example here. This was an example in solar stocks. Solar's bottomed in late 2012 and a lot of them just had the mother of all uptrends from this. You can see it makes a major low here. Tried to kind of bow tie here but it was a little sloppy. You notice that the market just rolled right back over and didn't get any traction. So this wouldn't have been a signal back here. And then it went higher and lower. Just kind of meandered back and forth, back and forth before hitting uh, almost an all-time low in here, also forming kind of a double bottom for those who are familiar with classical technical analysis. But you don't want to buy a double bottom just because it has occurred. But if you wait for that bow tie to occur or some other transitional pattern and you wait for that market to rally and pull back, then sometimes it might be worth a shot. In this particular case, this market took off after a couple of weeks and it ran up about 700% from uh, the bow tie trigger. Or actually, it's probably five to 600%, but still, not a bad trade nonetheless. You do a couple of those a year and you're going to be doing great. Here's an example on the short side. Green Mountain Coffee makes an all-time high in here. At this all-time high, everybody is happy, but when that market begins to implode, people begin to uh, question their position. And that's why transitional patterns could work so well as you got a lot of people everyone who bought from uh let's see after your setup here you got your bow tie down so everybody who bought from this level going backwards is now at a loss fairly quickly and as that market begins to sell these people are going to be forced with a decision as to whether or not to sell that market remember everything i do from a technical analysis standpoint is simply reading the mind of the market and it's, it has to make sense to me i'm not going to count a wave or do some kind of bar count or something and that's going to be the the setup it's going to have to be based on the fact that Maybe in the case of the bow ties, the cycles have begun to turn. And then also I can look at the chart and see there's a lot of people that probably bought during this trading range. And when that bow tie triggers, it's possible that pressure is going to put, be put on these people to sell the stock. So that's a downside signal. Let's take a look at another downside signal in here. Now this would drop really quick. And this is what I call a forced bow tie. It does make for a nice little clean uh, beautiful bow tie but in this particular case I would call this more of a first thrust down because the market has a sharp thrust down and then makes a first little pullback but a lot of times during that first thrust it will form that bow tie too and you can see that this market lost steam in here even though it made all-time highs right here it was just marginally above these prior highs in here and you didn't get a you got an immediate payoff you got a sharp retrace as shorts will often do and then it finally died out in here. Money management, position management will help you ride out some of those losses. Now, you want to look for first thrust first. In this particular case, this market sort of imploded in here and pulled back a little bit. So you want to study that first thrust pattern in addition to bow ties. And notice that you would have shorted here on a first thrust. And that bow tie really didn't form until a day or two later. And then this market has yet to pull back. So as soon as it pulls back, then you have a setup. But this could be a long ways down. Now, if you have a gradual rollover in a market, sometimes you'll get that bow tie set up right before that market begins to implode. But you want to look for first thrust first out of those two transitional patterns. And then, of course, keep an eye out for the bow tie. Okay. 
Now let's take a look at major versus minor signals. A major signal comes from a multi-year high and ideally an all-time high. In 1999, on this is a weekly chart, okay? We had a weekly bow tie down early or let's see yeah fairly early in 2000 and then we all know what happened after that we had a pretty serious slide we had two years where the market just meandered down in here 2002 2003 not a whole lot happened and then we had a major buy signal in the bow tie after that what happened well we had the mother of all uptrends okay which stopped just above the prior little peak at here so we have a sell signal off of all-time highs and that actually was very early in the year almost uh, towards the end of 2007 you can see we had a nice slide from there not that I'm happy that the market went down but I'm happy that we knew that we should be shorting the market now this buy signal was a little slow to catch up in 2009 as moving averages sometimes will but we did get a bow tie in 2009 and since then the market has had a pretty good run by major signals I mean off of multi-year lows and ideally you want it to be very significant in this particular case let's see it's a one two three four five six seven maybe ten year low this was an all-time high this was an all-time high this was a 13 year low or a little bit longer if memory serves so those are more important signal signals than your minor signals which will occur in between those major highs and major lows I'm much more excited to trade something that's coming off of a major low then something that just kind of happens in between. You can see you had a minus sell signal on the weekly chart in 2011, and that really didn't materialize that well. But if you get one, especially a weekly one, off of all-time highs, it really pays to pay attention to that signal because all major tops will have a transitional pattern, such as a bow tie or a first thrust, but not every first thrust or transitional pattern will obviously turn into a major top, but it does pay to pay attention. Uh, it always amazes me about two hours, two hours, about two, maybe on a daily chart, but about two years after a market has a major top, sometimes you'll hear people talking about how the market has topped out and trending lower. And if you pay attention to the bow ties, a lot of times you would have known that many years prior. Take a look at bonds, for instance. Bonds topped out in 2012, coming off of all-time highs. You had a bow tie down there, too. It wasn't exactly a route down. You had some pretty choppy trading in between. But notice that after that signal, that market never did get above that high. So that in and of itself would tell you that bonds are headed lower. You had a, somewhat of a minor signal back here. But your major signal was way back here in 2000. And 12. Another example, another great example, if you go back and look at the gold market in 2011, you really didn't hear a whole lot of people talking about how gold's headed lower for another year or two afterwards, but you had a bow tie off of all time highs there. And it was a little uh, choppy in between, but notice that market never to get above those highs. So it pays to pay attention to those signals when they occur, especially off of all time highs. Keep in mind that patterns are fractal. About a year ago, I was looking at some Forex charts, and I have a bad habit of, I'm anti-day trading, but if, I, I, if I'm if i looking at charts too closely and start looking at five minutes charts, before I know it, I'll find myself firing off a day trade, which in general is a bad idea, unless you're willing to trade a defined pattern and stay with that market as long as that intraday trend develops as opposed to scalping in and out all day long but the point I'm trying to make here is that we did have uh, I guess it's a somewhat sloppy bow tie but you did have a little uh, thrust down in this market it was coming off of major highs and then first little pullback you could see it had a nice little slide out of that on an intraday chart and we just showed you um, I just showed you weekly charts a little while ago uh, hopefully this all makes sense if not you can shoot me an email at David Dave Landry.com. I do weekly webinars too, and this week uh, I'm going to do another one on Thursday. And in Thursday's webinar, I'm going to talk a lot about the bow tie. So if you get a chance, you want to check that out. If you are interested in the webinars, if you go to my website, you'll see right here there's a countdown timer. Excuse me, if you tried to say a countdown timer, and it'll let you know when the next free webinar is there are a few free videos here including a couple of webinars the live shows are always free they're usually at Thursdays at 11 Eastern time almost every Thursday unless it's a holiday or some business schedule that conflicts 
uh, with them. But if you get a chance, check those out. We'd love to see you there. Again, shows are free. There is a nominal charge for the recordings, but it's not too bad. And the reason there's a charge, there is some processing involved. Uh, again, any questions, daviddavelandry.com, and um, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions. I answer all emails. Uh, be prepared to do a little work, though. So I'm, what I might tell you is, okay, go in and watch this video. Watch this video. You need to read this article, etc. So if you're willing to work, feel free to shoot me some emails, and I'll be happy to give you uh, some help there. Uh, any questions, again, daviddavelandry.com. Thank you so much.